what's interesting about this topic is that most people are convinced that it's uh, a given that on Shabbat you do not uh, do an tilat lulav. Now that is certainly true regarding the uh, from the second day onwards of Sukkot. From the second day onwards, when, when it happens to be Shabbat, like during Cholam Wa'ed, there's no Tilat Lulav, that's agreed to by all. Our discussion here is the Tilat Lulav on Shabbat when the first day happens to be Shabbat. Regarding this, we have two explicit Mishnayot, which tell us that when the first day falls on Shabbat, seeing that on the first day Meswat Lulav is Minat Torah, it is Dohe, the Isur of Tiltul of a Lulav, which is the Rabbanan, we divide and we do not till after Lulav. Where do we find this in the Mishnah? If you have Mesechet, uh, Mesechet uh, Sukkah in front of you, the Talmud Bavli and Daf Mem, Mem Aleph Amud Beth. Mm-hmm. If you have Mishnayot in front of you, it's Mesechet Sukkah Perek Sheshi Alacha Yud Aleph. So on Daf Mem Aleph Amud Beth, the Mishnah states, Yom Tov Harishon Shel Hav, the first day of Sukkot, which is generally called Hav Stam, Shehal Yot Shabbat, which when falls on Shabbat, what do people do? What are people supposed to do? Kol Ha'am Molichim Et Lulavahim Levet HaKneset, all the people take their Lulav to the Beth HaKneset, that is to say, Erev Shabbat, as Rashi says, if you note, Modichim et Lulavahim ne'ed of Shabbat, because they're sort of carry on Shabbat. They take their Lulav to the Beth Knesset on Friday. Lulavahorath, and the next day on Shabbat, the first day of Sukkot, Mashkimim, they come Kimim, Puvaim, they come to the Beth Knesset. Kol ehad v'ehad makir et shalom. Each person recognizes his Lulav, will not lo. And uses his lulav. Why dafke his? Why can't he use someone else's? Mipnei shamru hachamim en adam yotzei yedei chovato biyom tov rishon berulavu asher haviro. The hachamim taught us that a person is not yotzei yedei chova with a borrowed lulav with someone else's lulav on the first day. Washari moth hav. The other days of the half, when the Mishra is not in Hatara, Adam will say the Havatho Gudoravu Shal Haviro. The other days of the half, one can use a borrowed love that someone gave you as a, to, as a, as a loan. Does that include uh, this coming Sunday, which is the second day of the half? Any day other than the first day. Alright? In fact, it's so obvious from this Mishnah and so plain to all the Chachamim that when the first day of Sukkot falls on Shabbat that we do not hit up to love the Rabbi Yosei now states in the Mishnah Yom Tov Adishon Shehav Shehav Yot B'Shabbat when this is the case as it is this year we're Shachach we're Hosiyat HaRulav L'Shut HaRabim and a person forgot that it was Shabbat and he's not supposed to take his Lulav and carry it outside and he forgot and he did so Patur, he's Patur, he's not Hayav to bring a Korban for uh, doing the Malacha of Hosea Mirashut Lerashut on Shabbat. Why? Mitnesha Hosea Mirashut. Because this is not something he did Stam uh, Kacha. It's not as if he just uh, decided to take a book and go for a walk to the park and sit down and read it. So he's carrying the book with any particular. There's no Miswa involved in what he's doing. Here he's doing it. Be- because he was commanded to do the Miswa of Lulav as Rashi explains Sh- Rashi says Shehasi'o Bereshuth Bereshuth Miswa Shaya Tarud Bemiswa he was busy thinking about doing this Miswa of the Tilaf Lulav Umahashev Wa'asuk Umahir La'asotha and he was uh, hurrying and rushing to do, do this Miswa and, and do it properly and take care of this Miswa and that is why he forgot Umitoch Kach Ta'a so he's, he was actually Tarud the Tirdash al Miswa. He was uh, otherwise occupied, his mind was preoccupied, he was otherwise 
engaged in, in dealing with something which is a miswa in, in and of itself, a miswa in the Torah. Rabbi's opinion is that he who made a mistake regarding one miswa and as a result was over and he saw, which is an isur of karet, which if you do melacha on Shabbat and Mezid, you have karet. If you did so and and and, and b'shovet, you have a korban. If a person made such a mistake because of the miswa, according to Biyose, he is patumi korban. In other words, this entire Mishnah states plainly and obviously, and, and uh, there's no two ways about it, that one is not teru love on Shabbat. That's one Mishnah. There's a second Mishnah, which is the beginning of the next chapter, which is one daf later, on daf mem beth amud beth, the beginning of the next chapter. The Mishnah begins with the words, Lulav wa harava. You see that? Daf mem beth amud beth. The next page. No, the next daf, one daf later. Lulav wa harava shisha wa shiva. Correct? Which means as follows. Uh, what does that mean? How can the lulav and arava, which are two things, be six or seven things? Well, that's not what it means. What it means is as follows. Lulav wa arava, the miswa of lulav and arava are done for either six days or seven days. And then two lines later the Mishnah explains. When, when is it six days and when is it seven days? The lulav, the, we're, referring, we're talking about lulav now, but it, it goes together with arava. The arava that's being discussed here is the arava which is placed on the corners of the Mizbeah in the Beth Mikdash, a special aravoth which are placed on the Mizbeah. So the Mishnah states, lulav wa arava shisha wa shiva. It is either six days or seven days, depending. Depending on what? It explains now. Lulav shiva kesad. When do we perform the miswa of lulav for seven days of the Chag? Yom tov harishon shel Chag shechag yot b'Shabbat. When the first day falls on Shabbat, lulav shiva. Then we do lulav seven days, because we do it the first day as well. And these other six days of Chalam Oev. The eighth day, of course, is not Sukkot, it's not like not part of the Chag, it's a separate Chag, Shmini Aseret. Roshar Kol Ayamim, and when the first day falls on any other day of the week, other than Shabbat, Shisha, then we do it for six days. In other words, the first day, let's say, is on a Friday, so we, we do it, that's what we do in Shabbat Lulav. The second day is on Shabbat, we don't do it. And the other five days of Cholom we do it. So one, and one plus five is six, so that year we do six days. However, if, as it is this year, the first day is on Shabbat, then you do not tilaf lulav. It says in the Mishnah here in front of us. You do not tilaf lulav on Shabbat, the first day, and the other days also, which are not Shabbat, which is now the six coming days. Uh, so in, you end up doing it altogether for seven days. Correct. So the Mishnah states, two Mishnayos therefore stated plainly that the tilaf lulav is done on Shabbat on the first day of Sukkot, and therefore everyone is going to want to know. A legitimate question, why do most people not do this? Alright, so let's see what the Gemara or the, the Talmud Bavli says about this. Which other Mishnah are you referring to? Uh, the, the one about the, the woman takes uh, the lulav on Shabbat of her husband and her son and she puts it back in the water. That's, that's correct, mean, that's also the correct. The can even take the lulav of her son and husband on Shabbat. Which proves that they were doing on Shabbat. No. Correct. All right. So that's what the Gemara says. Daf mem beth amud beth at the bottom of the page. It says what well, it says. Gemara. You see that it says amai. What's amai? Amai means why. In other words, why do we not do the tidaf lulav when for on Shabbat? In other words, the rest of the days of the uh, of the week at least, not the first day of the chag. Amai tiltul ba'alma hu molit ha Shabbat. It's only tiltul ba'alma. It's only a very minor isur midivrehem of tiltul, like picking up a stick on Shabbat, which is mukte or something. It's not a major inyan. And uh, here it's, it's a miswa of some kind. Even if it's only miswa midir banan, the other six days of the chag, why wouldn't we do it? The Gemara answers, Ana Rabba, Rabba explained as follows, Gzera Shema Yitlenu B'yado, B'yerech Esed Baki, Limod, V'yavirenu Abba Hamot, V'yashut Harabim. 
و عنو تعمد و شفر و عنو تعمد و مخیل This is back on, on to the next page now Daf Mun Gimel Amad Alaf In other words, the Gmara The Tamad Bavri here quotes The well known, what's known as Gzirah de Rabba And Rabba explains That there is a Gzirah regarding all Misworth uh, Which might lead someone to carry Something on Shabbat Whether it's Lulav or Shofar or Kriyat Anirila on Shabbat we don't do these things on Shabbat according to Rabbi and the Tamil Bavli why? because someone one or two or three or fifteen or a hundred Jews out of all the Jews in the world may as was well, carry on Shabbat in other words as, as, because of our Hashash of Chilul Shabbat we will never tell the Niswa that's what, that's, that's what it comes down to correct? Which, when you think about it, is perhaps a little bit surprising. Perhaps even a little bit strange. Because let's just for argument's sake say there were a hundred Jews in the world. Just to make things simple. There were a hundred Jews in the world. How many Jews are likely to make such an, an error and carry the Shofar or the Lulav on Shabbat? Especially if, if all the Batei Din in all the world, uh, you know, a week or two before give us a, cu- a couple of shiurim and a couple of sermons and, and they print on the Pashat Shavua sheet and they, and they nail it up on, on the door of the Beth Knesset everyone sees two, two, two weeks, three weeks in advance remember you are not allowed to carry your love on Shabbat bring it here, Ere Shabbat v'chule, v'chule. you would imagine that very very few maybe no, no one would, would make this mistake maybe one in a hundred would make this mistake so we're, we're, or maybe two in a hundred for argument's sake so we mean the Vater and Yisrael for 98 Jews it, because of uh, the possible Chilul Shabbat uh, by two, two Jews and it's only a possibility it's not a certain thing whereas the Bitul of the Miswat Miswat Sukkah is, is a certain thing it's definitely being the Vutal according to this you're talking about an area where there's no Eru obviously right? well we're either talking about an area, a place where there is no Eruv, or an area where you cannot have an Eruv, such as a place where you have a Shotarabim, which is any street outside. So, and, and from which you therefore understand that it, and, any Eruv that you're used to considering an Eruv, most Eruvim that you're used to considering an Eruv, Ruven, are not an Eruv. But that's a separate issue. We're not the Lemesek Eruvim now, we're the Lemesek so, to keep things simple, let's just say there's no Eruv, all right? I would just add parenthetically that if it was really so simple to make an Eruv in almost any place, including places where there is Rishul Tarabim, uh, and what I mean when I say Rishul Tarabim is a street like the street outside here, like Rechom Najara, which is more than uh, 8 meters wide and uh, it's not a dead end and many people use during the day that's what I mean by Rishul Tarabim that's the halachic definition of Rishul Tarabim I believe uh, according to the, the, the sources uh, we find in the Mishnah and in the Talmudim and uh, the requirement of that certain Rishonim mention that it be used daily by 600,000 people is not mentioned by Chazal anywhere um, if it was such a simple matter to to um, make an Eruv in almost any place then this Gzerah of Rabbah that we just learned about a moment ago makes even less sense because then well, why would we be worried about people carrying make an Eruv, make sure there's an Eruv everywhere teach all the Rabbanim Hilchot Eruvin make sure every place, every town, every city has an Eruv and then all will be Nikshal and there will be no, no problem whatsoever everyone can do the Mishra Lulav on Shabbat it's because Eruvin are not possible in all places in fact in most towns and most cities an Eruv is not possible because there is a Rishul Tarabim and where there is a Rishul Tarabim you cannot make an Eruv that is why Rabbah says we are worried that some people will carry on Shabbat and be mahal al Shabbat we don't want that but those, if, you are, if you want to know Ruben why uh, there are Eruvin in 
different places in different towns or different suburbs what have you today it's because the claim is that the streets that people are using today are not Rishul Tarabim because they're not used by 600,000 people on a daily basis which I don't believe is a correct uh, correct notion but that's Makhluk at Rishonim and we're not going to go into that right now so the Rabbah is telling us that because of the Hashash of Hidul Shabbat we are uh, we are Mevatel and Mitzvah of Lulav from all of Am Yisrael that's, that's what we're being told when on all the other days of the Hag when it's a, when it's a Mitzvah the Rabbanan that's what we're about to see in a moment because the Mishnah just told us that when it falls on the first day which is Minat Torah, according to everyone. Mishnah Torah on the first day of Sukkot is, is Minat Torah. The Mishnah told us, two Mishnahs just told us that you do the Tidat Torah on Shabbat. So, Pang Disk Zerah, it only applies, according to what the Gemara just, is about to tell us, or just telling us now, it only applies when the Mishnah is the Rabbanah, not when the Mishnah is Minat Torah. At any rate, it is interesting to note that because of the uh, entirely uncertain possibility that someone will carry on Shabbat with a Mivatel a Miswa even if it's a Miswa the Rabbana a Mivatel a Miswa from many people so, and in the words of if I'm not mistaken the Osameach writes this regarding this matter he says that you see that Am Yisrael's Masiruth Nefesh for the Miswa of Shabbat because of Am Yisrael's Nefesh for Shmirat Shabbat we're going to Mivatel a Miswa of of Lula uh, actually no I think that I think there was some that regarding Shofar which is uh, which is uh, which is according to what the uh, the assumption of Rosh Hashanah at least the Mitzvah of Lulav I'm sorry the Mitzvah of Shofar on the first uh, on Rosh Hashanah is is you know Torah that's his assumption and which is a separate issue which we haven't discussed yet uh, the Mitzvah of Lulav um, again. Mishra Shofar is, is Minat Torah and yet we, not, we do not blow the Shofar on Shabbat because of the Hashash again the, the Talmud Bavli is the same reason for Lulav as it does for Shofar that we do not blow the Shofar on Shoshana because someone might carry the Shofar to go and learn from someone how to blow or to go to someone who will blow for him or, or what have you so we, we, we do see the, the Hashivut of Shabbat from this whole discussion Alright, so we have a chashash that Shabbat will be mechuleret by carrying, and therefore we don't do tilat rulav on the first. On, 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 we don't do tilat rulav. So the Gemara ans, asks now the question: Dafmin Gimel, and we'll uh, look at the top. I achi yom rishon nami. So that's the case in the first day of Sukkot. Also, we should say the same thing. It's just as likely that someone's going to carry the rulav on the first day as the second or the third day. Correct? And we learn the Mishnah that you do do it that for love on the first day. So why is this Gzera not hold on the first day? So the Gemara answers, Rishon Hatakin Le Rabbanan Beveto. We know, says the, says the Gemara, that, that uh, on the first day, when the falls on Shabbat, the Takara was made that everyone do the Tirat through love in their home. The Takana was made that people should do it in their home. The point, purpose of that Takana is obvious. If you tell people you do the Tirat through love on the first day which falls on Shabbat, but you do it in the home, and there's no reason for anyone to carry. Or there's less, it's less likely anyhow that someone's going to carry, correct? So the Gemara asks, Ha Tenach, Ha Takana. Alright, that's, that answer is good. Once that Takana was made, what, what about before this Takana was made? Call them Takana, Ma'i Kalamemar. Ela, so this, so this reason, this first explanation we just gave now is rejected, and the Gemara gives another explanation. Ela, Rishon de Ithamin Hatora Bigvulin Lagazrubahorabanan. The first day of the Chag, where the Miswa of Lulav is Minatora Bigvulin. Bigvulin means Betsim everywhere, not just in the Mikdash, but all throughout, well, throughout the country, and also throughout the world, Betsim. This Zera was not enacted. So the, so the, the Talmud Bavli is telling the Furash, yes, what the Mishnah says is correct. On the first day of Chag, which falls on Shabbat, we do this out of love, because it's Minat Torah. 
Tanakh, the Latin of the Torah, big volume, the Zrubu Horaban on the other days of the Chag, where the Mishwal in the Torah is, is a Zechel Midash only, it's Midivrehem, there the Gzera was made. The Gemara now asks, Ihachi, so according to the first day, you do this after Rabbi, even if it falls on Shabbat. The Gemara now asks, Ihachi, if, if so, Haidana Nani, today also we should be doing it. In other words, you, you hear plainly, you can, you can hear the question being asked by uh, someone in the Beth Midrash in Bavel, and he's hearing this explanation, and he says, but wait a second, I know that we don't do this here in Bavel, we don't do it after Rabbi on the first day when it falls on Shabbat. So what are you telling me? You just gave me a beautiful explanation, but it's, it's not what we do. So the Gemara says, Machon, we we here in Bavel don't do it. Why? Anan la yadhanan the kibu adi yarha. We here in Bavel do not know when the uh, when the Beth Din Eretz Yisrael was kovei uh, the Rosh, Rosh Chodesh. In other words, we don't know which day was made Rosh Chodesh. We're talking obviously about a period when uh, Kiddush HaChodesh was still being done by the Beth Din Eretz Yisrael Pirehiya, not according to the fixed calendars we have today. And seeing that we do not know which day was made Rosh Chodesh, and therefore we have a safek whether today or tomorrow is, is the first day of Chag Be'emet. In other words, today Shabbat, the first day we think it's the Shabbat, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's Shabbat, maybe it's Sunday. Therefore, we do, we do not do anything else. We'll love Yisafek. That's what the Gemara says. Anan, la yad anan b'kibwa da'yarha. We here in Bavel, we don't know the kibwa da'yarha, when Rosh Chodesh was set. Inho, they over there, in Eretz Yisrael, da'yad e b'kibwa da'yarha, lidho. They, in Eretz Yisrael, they know for a fact which day was made Rosh Chodesh, because the Shlichim were able to uh, inform all the Jews in Eretz Yisrael and the surrounding areas before, for, between Rosh Chodesh and Sukkot, you have two weeks to the people know. That's enough time for people to know. So they know for a fact that Shabbat is the first day of Chag. They know for a fact that today is the 15th of Tishrei. And therefore, it's a, it's a miswa wa da'if min torah not a, not, a, not a miswa misafek. Whereas in Bavel, they can't be sure. Because the Shlichim didn't get to Bavel in time. And, they, and it may be that tomorrow is the 15th and today is the 14th. And therefore, misafek, we don't do it. Now the Gemara asks, doesn't ask, I'm sorry, it states, in Hachinami, yes, that's absolutely correct. In Hachinami, the Tane Hada, one Mishnah states, the Mishnah that we learned originally, Yom Tov Arishon Shilhar, Shilhar Yom Shabbat, Kol Ha'amolichim Adul Vehem Harabayif. That's one, uh, that's one Mishnah, where Tanya Idach, there's another Mishnah which states the Beit HaKnesef. Another Mishnah says they take the Ulovim to the Beit HaKnesef. The, the other Mishnah that was referred to here, the first Mishnah that was referred to by the Gemara is the Mishnah at the beginning of the Perek, and Dachmeim Beit Hamul Beit. In the middle of the Mishnah it says, Miswath Rulav Kesav, you see that in the middle? Of the Mishnah, the page before, it says Yom Tov Arishon Shel Chag Shechal Yod B'Shabbat Kol Ha'am Molichim Et Lul Vehem La Harabayit. You see, so here it talks about people taking the Lulavim to Harabayit, and there's not, and the other Mishnah that we saw on Daf Mem Aleph Amud Bet spoke about people taking the Lulavim Kol Ha'am Molichim Et Lul Vehem La Beit Knesset. So why, is, why does one Mishnah say Kol Ha'am Molichim Et Lul Vehem La Beit Knesset? The other Mishnah says La Harabayit. One speaks about the shul, or the Beth Knesset, one speaks about Harabai, the Midash. Why, why the difference? And the Gemara answers over here in Dachman Gimel Al Aleph. So the Gemara says, Shema Mina, Kan, Bezman, Shabbat Hamidash Kayam, Kan, Bezman, Shabbat Hamidash Kayam, Shema Mina. In other words, from here we understand that yes, in fact, it is it's true that both Bezman, Shabbat Hamidash Kayam, and Bezman, Shabbat Hamidash Kayam, and Bezman, Shabbat Hamidash Kayam but before the Chubban and after the Chubban, we are not told to love on Shabbat on the first day. That's why the one Mishnah speaks about when the Midas stood, it says, Kol Ha'am Olechim Yathul Vehem Laharabai. The Mishnah is describing what went on in Yerushalayim, as many Mishnah often do, describe the reality that was in, going on in Yerushalayim. And the other Mishnah which states, Kol Ha'am Olechim Yathul Vehem Laharabai, in the Levet HaKneset, refers to the reality after the Chubban, when there's no Bet Midas. Now the Gemara adds, 
how do we know that the, the Misra is only on the first day, in the Torah? The Gemara says, Barishon, Nitemen Atura Bigvulim in Anan. How do we know that the Misra on the first day is in the Torah, the whole Makom, Bigvulim? In other words, all over, the, all over the country and all over the world, not just in the Mikdash. Detanya Urakahtem. It says in the Torah of Rash, it says, Urakahtem Lachem Yom Arishon. It says, Urakahtem Lachem Yom Arishon. The Gemara uh, takes this pasuk and explains Each person has to have his own love it can't be, You can't receive it as a gift from someone else or as a, You can't borrow, from, borrow it from someone else It can't be borrowed and it can't be stolen It has to be yours הראשון, says Ola Kachten, Lachem Yom Harishon, מלמד שאינו דוחה אל היום טוב, הראשון בלבד. This is a Baraitha, that was quite, it's quoted by the Gmarara, the Talmud, which says plainly that the first day is דוחה שבת, אפילו בגבולין. So it's exactly as we said before. So it's all, all, everything's clear now, correct? And with that, the Talmud at this point ends its discussion, temporarily at least, about the love. We, we, we have we saw two Mishnayot which tell us that you do the love on the first day when it falls on Shabbat the Gemara explained to us now that the first day has been on Torah and there's no Gzera on the first day when the Mishnah has been on Torah and, the, and even after the Chuban of the Beth Midash we, we do so etc so everything's very clear the other thing mentioned in the Mishnah that we looked at before was Arava and I mentioned explained that this refers to the Arava that is placed on the side of the Mizbeach now, the arava is a little bit different. This arava is a little bit different from lulav. In which way is it different? It says in the Mishnah, the first, the first Mishnah here in the beginning of Perek Revi, a few lines into the Mishnah, it says, Arava Shiva Kesav, you see that? It says, Yom Hashvi'i Shal Arava Shehalil B'Shabbat Arava Shiva, Roshah Kol Eamim Shisha. Here is the opposite. When the last day of Sukkot, the seventh day of Sukkot, is on Shabbat, then Arava of the Mizbeach is done for seven days. But when, but when, yes, but when uh, any other day is, is, is the seventh day, not Shabbat, then it's only done for six days. In other words, the, the Shabbat during Cholam Moed, not, and not on the last day, is not the Shabbat. But again, we're talking about the Arava that is done in the Mikdash on the, next, on, on, on the Mizbeach. So the Gemara now goes into a discussion of the Arava which we're not going to go into now. Um, this is... Any other on the corner of the Mizbeach? What the reason? This is... Halachala Moshe Messinai, according to uh, what it says in the Gran a few places. Now, it says, on them, Daf Mem Gimel Amud Beth, at the top of the page. Here, the, the Talmud begins a discussion about the Arava. We're going to skip the discussion here and get to the bottom, uh, near the bottom of the page. We have a Braitha, which is from the Tosefta, the Sefer Sukkah, which says, Lulav dohet ha-Shabbat b'tachidatho, mu'arava b'sofo. You see that? Which is the last line? No, it's about eight lines from the bottom of the page. Next, next to the word Lulav. Lulav dohet ha-Shabbat b'tachidatho, mu'arava b'sofo. In other words, when the first day falls on Shabbat, then Lulav is dohet Shabbat. When the last day falls on Shabbat, when the last day is on Shabbat, then Arava is Dohe Shabbat. We're talking here again what, what was done in the Mikdash, not what we do on Hashanah Rabbah. We're about to speak about that. We're not yet speaking about that. What we do on, on, on Hashanah Rabbah is, uh, is uh, Minhag Nevi'im, or maybe a Takanat Nevi'im, it depends, the Machlokef. At any rate, what we do on Hashanah Rabbah with the Arava, the Hibut Arava, that's not what we're discussing now. Here we're discussing the Mikdash itself. In the Mikdash itself, Arava was uh, not the Hesh Shabbat during the week of Sukkot, except for the last day when it falls on Shabbat. That's what it says, that's what it says here in this Tosefta. Lulav Dohe Shabbat Tchilatho, Mo'arava Besofo. And it gives us the following 
story, very interesting story. Once it happened that the last day of Sukkot was on Shabbat. What did they do when the seventh day was on Shabbat? They brought large branches, morbiot, of Arava. They used to bring them from Motza, actually, down here. Um, to the Migdash and we put them in uh, buckets of water to keep them fresh uh, Erev Shabbat and they would, have, they would have them ready for Shabbat morning in the Migdash that's what it says Pama had house for each other about the Yot Shabbat have you more be of Shabbat from Erev Shabbat when you home Nazara when he killed by him by Tosin there were people called by Tosin who did not agree that you should uh, do this Arava on Shabbat it's not that it should be Doche Shabbat on the seventh day and they took the branches of Arava and they buried them under rocks, under stones. Why? Because stones are mukte. So they figure we'll, we'll teach these prushim a lesson. They know that that, it's, that stones are mukte. So and we don't we don't think that they should be, they should be kind of kohanim to put the uh, aravot on his back on Shabbat. So if we bury them under stones, they won't be able to get to them on Shabbat, and they, they, won't, they won't be able to do it. So it says, "Talum uchavashum tachat avanim." Lemahar he kilo behem ame aretz. Jews who were not such great tamid chachamim saw what the Beit Hasim had done, buried the the Mordi Yochshel Arava and the rocks. Ushmatu mitachat avanim, and they just they didn't ask any questions. They just went ahead and removed the rocks and took the the Aravot out. Well, he viewed a koanim was kafum. They said they are mizbech, and the koanim came along and took them and put them on the side of mizbech. Which only goes to show you that you definitely need a merit. It's very important to have a merit. <laughs> it's not a joke. I'm not, I'm not joking. I mean, I'm so serious. There are many things which, if left only, you, can, you see from here plainly, there are certain kinds of things that, if you have only Tamidah Chachamim in, in the vicinity, that certain things will never get done. <laughs> or certain things, won't, certain things will never happen. You need a few Amirites who don't ask too many questions. They just go ahead and do it. Sometimes they got, they'll make mistakes. It's also true. They, usually they, they should ask before they do. But sometimes it's good they don't ask. And this is an example where it's, it's better not to ask any questions. Because they, they told these by the similar lesson. If you do that again, we, the Amirites will take care of you. So you can't, you, you're not going to get, you're not going to stop us doing the Arazam Shabbat. So it says here in the uh, Tosefta, Okay, so we see from here that Arava is the high Shabbat on the seventh day, correct? Fine. Alma ben Atilahi, and therefore this, is, this goes back to the discussion that we skipped, that the, uh, the Miswa of Arava also involved in Atila, in other words, uh, um, so just like the tilap love involves the tilap picking up with your hands, etc., the arava also has to be picked up in such a, in such a fashion. All right. So from here we see that it has to be done in such a fashion. It has to be done with the direction of tilap and not in, in any other way. The arava is that the writer? Let's say it's it's like the writer. If you look on the top of the page, you will see that it says near the top of the page, "Amar Rabbi Yohanan, why the why is it the Shabbat on the seventh day? Kedele far salashi imi Torah." It's not written in the Torah, but it's considered like something which is in the Torah. So it's like Allah Halam Moshe Sinai. But because it's not written in the Torah, that's why the Bethlehem, for example, were not modern. Now, the Gemara states here on the top of the page, not the top, uh, about 10 or 12 lines down, on Mem Gimna Beth, regarding Arava, the same question that was asked about Ulav is also asked about Arava. If that's the case, we should be, uh, today also, we should be Doche uh, Shabbat on the seventh day and do Hibut Arava or do uh, Natilat Arava on the seventh day, even if it's on Shabbat. And so the Gemara, and the Gemara says here, Ihachi, Ha'idana Nami Lidche. If that's the case, we should, if we seen that we made the special Halacha, that is Doche on the seventh day, Lekadele Farsema to make it known that it is Minat Torah so we should do it even if it falls on Shabbat so, so people will realize this is really Minat Torah it's a serious thing the Gemara gives the same answer Anan layadenan b'kibwa di'archa ino yadayadeh b'kibwa di'archa alidcheh yes we don't know here in Bavel we don't know exactly the day that was set for Rosh Chodesh so we, don't, we have a problem we have we today this day and tomorrow both are suffect as far as we are concerned but in Eretz Yisrael they know for a fact they should be tocheh 
Then it goes on to say in the Gemara that uh, for different reasons it doesn't work out, never falls on Shabbat or what have you. Then it gives the, the story that we saw now about the Baiposim and the Amearetz. And then the Gemara says at the bottom of the page, Wa'ela Nidho, or as Rashi's goddess, Wa'ela Lidhe. Rashi explains the bottom of the page. What does that mean, El Alitre? Kewan, says Rashi, de Benetila, Hawa, Yesh Lano, that's what I should say. Yesh Lano, is that what it says in your book? I don't The Gisan, the first Hus in Rashi is, Kewan, de Benetila, Hawa, Yesh La, Asot Lo, Zechel Amigdash. It's slightly different for what you have in front of us, but the, 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 the meaning is the same. Thank you. The meaning is the same. So Rashi says, seeing that this is. We're supposed to do this Natila on the seventh day, so why don't we do a, a, a Zechel Amigdash? By, by doing what? We'll live Cheshvi'i Dila Shabbat, and on, if we're on the seventh day, we should do it anyhow. In other words, we shouldn't refrain from doing it uh, on the last day. We should definitely do it on the last day, even if it falls on Shabbat, to do a Zechel Amigdash. And because of this Inyan that we said before, Rabbi Yohanan said, Kalele Farsanashi Mina Torah, because we want people to know that this Aravah is, is Mina Torah, and therefore we, we made a special day, we made a special uh, halakha, that, that when it falls, the seventh day is on Shabbat, we'd have to do Dokhe Shabbat, so that people will see that it is so. So the Gemara answers here, Kewan da'ana la da'henan in honami lo da'hu. This is something very new, something completely different from what we heard before. Twice so far, on Daf Mem Gimel Amud Aleph and on Daf Mem Gimel Amud Beth. Once regarding Lulav and once regarding Arava. The Gemara said, Anan Layad Enan Bikidwa Deyarha. We here in Bavel, we miskenim, we don't know when Rosh Chodesh was, was set by the Beth, we don't know for sure. So we have a Safek. So we don't do it with Safek. We don't do anything on Shabbat we don't normally do with Safek. We only do it when it's Vadai. Alright, so, but uh, actually so they know that it's Vadai uh, Yom Tov Rishon regarding Ulav or Vadai uh, Shvi'i on Shabbat and therefore the Gemara says Nachon in Hodein as he said they had had the Kibwa they had they should do it and be Tuchay Shabbat correct now the Gemara just said the opposite we just read now the last second to last line on Daf Men Gimel Amud Beth it says Kewan Da'anan La Da'hanan Inu Nami La Da'hu seeing that we in Bavel we don't do it because we can't because we have a Safek they in Eretz Yisrael should also not do it that's very unusual when you think about it. Where have we heard such a thing? Where do we find in the Torah that because one Jew is unable to perform a miswa, then we tell another Jew, you shouldn't do it either because he can't do it. He has a problem. He's anus. He has some problem. So therefore, we, all of us, the other people should also not do the miswa. Or even if one kihila, let's say one kihila can't do the miswa, but the other kihila can where do we find this idea that we tell the Kila that it can do the Miswa? You shouldn't do it because they can't do it. Well, I'm very sorry they can't do it. We can. We should do the Miswa. No. Yeah, and it's also the exact opposite of what the Gemara told us. It's the, the Gemara here is, is backtracking. There's no question. It's, it's saying the opposite of what I just said a few moments ago. Previously it said, we in Bavel can't do it because we have a Safek. They in Eretz Yisrael so, so have no Safek, so they should do it on Shabbat. Now the Gemara says, well, we can't do it, so they shouldn't do it either. What's happening? Now this was this statement was said regarding Arava, seeing that we here in Bavel, when the seventh day falls on on uh, Shabbat, we cannot do Arava because we have a safek. So they in Eretz Yisrael should also not do the Arava on the seventh day because we can't do it here in Bavel. So then the Gemara says, oh, wait a second, didn't you just tell me that regarding love on the first day they do? Let's get on the first day which falls on Shabbat and we here do not. That's what the Gemara says now. Wahayom Torah Rishon de Levdivan La Dahe or Didho Dahe. Didn't you just tell us that we here in Bavel don't do it, but they do it? They are Toche Shabbat on the first day. The Gemara says, Amri, on the top of the Daf Mem Dalla Lamur Aleph, Amri, it was stated in the Bet Midrash. It doesn't say exactly who said so. It's said Bistama. Amri, Levdivho Nami La Dahe. They also should not do it. Why? Because we don't do it. We they shouldn't do it either. So now the Gemara just changed its mind, basically. 
It's really as simple as that. The, the Gemara has told us on Daf Mem Gimel Avad Aleph regarding lulav on Shabbat that in Eretz Yisrael where they have no safek, they should be not tell lulav on Shabbat on the first day. But in Bavel where there's a safek, they should not do so. Now on Daf Mem Dal Avad Aleph on the top line, the Gemara just told us now, seeing that we in Bavel have a safek and therefore we do not do it, they in Eretz Yisrael should also not do so. It's not. It's not. Uh, uh, very, it's not surprising to say the least. So that's a rule from the Moshe Pashinai that uh, if one group of people can do it in one country, especially well, who said, said something about Allah Hanu Shem Sinai? Who said such a thing? No, but where, where does it come from? So where where does it come from? Well, I don't know. Well, let's read what Rashi says. Rashi says on top of Daf Mem Dalad Amud Aleph. Rashi says that Ho Nami La Dahe. Rashi says they also in Eretz Yisrael should not do lulav on the first day. Why not? Shelol Asot Yisrael Agudot Agudot Agudot. So the Am Yisrael will not be uh, divided into groups. In other words, one group does lulav on the first day, other group does not. We want we want Am Yisrael to be uni- unified. We don't want this division. We want everyone to be doing the same thing. Because we don't want the Torah to look like different Torah, says Rashi. We need a Kishtei Torah. It looks like there's two different Torah here. These Jews do it, these Jews don't do it. It must be two different Torah. Because <laughs> we here in Bavel, we are not Dukhe on Shabbat. So they shouldn't also say so that everyone should be doing the same thing. That's, that's what Rashi says. The question could be asked. About the two uh, right, two seders. We in, uh, in Chutzlaret do two study on Pesach. In Eretz Yisrael we do one. Uh, in Chutzlaret they have two days of Yom Tov. In Eretz Yisrael they have one, which means that on 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 the same day in Chutzlaret where they're davening Tfilat Yom Tov, the Jews in Eretz Yisrael are davening Tfilat Chol. Well, on the day when Jews in Chutzlaret are davening Tfilat Yom Tov and not wearing Tefillin, Jews in Eretz Yisrael are davening Tfilat Chol and wearing Tefillin. And that's true whether you hold that one does wait for them or hold on, whether one, whether one holds that one does not. Because at the end of the Chag, you also have two days in Torah and Chutzlaretz. And, and then it's Vadai no longer Cholam Moed, and the Jews in Chutzlaretz are keeping a second day in Torah, not wearing Tfilin. The Jews in Eretz Yisrael are Vadai wearing Tfilin, now it's no longer Sukkot, the Kulei Kule Amma, according to everybody. Not to mention the fact that one should be wearing Tfilin and Cholam Moed. So, we have the Quran many examples of uh, uh, many halachot, many realities where Jews in different places for different reasons are doing different things. Why all of a sudden here is this the overriding principle? Why is this the, the yardstick by which we, we measure the, the matter? By the way, it's not just Rashi who says this. The Rambam also says the same, gives the same explanation for what the Gemara says here, based on what the Gemara says here. I'll quote the Gemara to you, uh, the Rambam to you. It's in Yichot Lulav. The Rambam says in Yichot Lulav, Perek Zayn, Hamacha. Tet Zayn, or in some editions, Yod Zayn. Umi Shehar Bet HaMikdash, since the Churban of the Mikdash, Asru Chachamim, Litalet HaLulav, B'Shabbat, Bimo Yishon. The Chachamim were Oser, listen to what the Rambam says. אסרו חכמים ליטול את הלולב בשבת ביום ראשון וחכמים הוא אוסר תביעות הלולב on the first day when it falls on Shabbat ואפילו בני אלת ישראל שקידשו את החודש and even the Jews now Israel who know Kiddush, when the Kiddush HaKodesh was with Nei Bnei HaGvolin because of the, the Jews further afield in other words, in Chutz Laaretz are the Chukim Sheinam Yudim Bekviyat HaKodesh Kedei Sheyu HaKol Shawim Badavar Zeh so that everyone will be doing the same thing Wolo Yu Ele Notlim B'Shabat Wolo Elu En Notlim First of all, it's a fact it has to be stated uh, openly that what the Rambam says here in Kavod is not correct. The, the Rambam says that Chachamim Oser to Notelu Lav on Shabbat. It doesn't say any, it doesn't swell. When you say the Chachamim, which Chachamim? The Mishnah says that you that you are Notel on Shabbat. The Gemara itself, the Talmud Bavli itself said that you are Notel on Shabbat. It's only when the, when, when the Gemara changes its mind. Uh, that later that the Gemara all of a sudden says no wait a second we, we, we didn't mean what we just said uh, no one should need to tell Ulav on Shabbat so it also should be mentioned in the Talmud Yerushalmi there's no mention of such an idea it goes without saying it's Pashut in, in the Talmud Yerushalmi that you, you are not tell Ulav on the first day which falls on Shabbat it's so Pashut that I'll, I'll show you I'll bring you a story in a moment from, from Yerushalmi you'll see exactly how Pashut it is so 
But to say that, to say categorically that the Chachamim were Ose and the Tidat Lev on Shabbat, based on this statement here, is a little bit misleading. It's not, not, not entirely accurate because the Mishnah was certainly not Ose, and in fact the Mishnah says the opposite. And the Talmud itself be, be, began by saying something different. And then, cha- and then unca- uncharacteristically, in a very, a very unusual phenomenon, what we just saw here, that one says one thing and the rest of the Daf later changes its mind. Well, uh, a mood later changes its mind. That's a very unusual thing indeed. So the Rambam Ram says, in a, in a rather simplistic way, that the Chachamim wa Oseh and the Tilat Lev Shabbat is not entirely correct, not entirely accurate. But the reasoning the Rambam gives for this uh, idea is the same reason that the Rashi gave. He says, Shakol Kadesh, Shakol Yushawim, but Davar Zeh, everyone should be doing the same thing. So the Rashi and Rambam are telling us the same thing. That in order that there should not be a distinction between the Jews of Bavel and the Jews of, of Eretz Yisrael regarding the Tilat Lev on Shabbat, the Talmud states that everyone, no one should do it. Despite the fact that we pointed out before that there are many things that we do differently. This was a chutzah, this was an Eretz Yisrael, so why is this, why is this a, a different case? And the Tzidmi Vodoshin, in his Chidoshim on the, on the uh, Talmud, called Norone Sadeh, Sechet Sukkah, this agrees with Rashi. This is to be found in for those who want to look it up, it's on page 146. Masechet Sukkah, Daf Min Daf Amud Aleph. Rashi Gibo Matchil Lil Hona The Ritziv asks uh, a couple of questions on what Rashi has to say. First of all, we ask a kusha from the Gemara and Sechi Yivamot where it states that there's no inyan of agudot agudot of lotir kodadu of, of Jews uh, acting differently when they're doing so in two different cities. It's only when they're in the same town and some are doing one thing and some are doing the other thing that it's a problem. Which, of course, you, you might ask me, that's the case, so why do we have that today? When or we have, you know, uh, X number of Jews in Yerushalayim, all in one place in Yerushalayim, shall we say. If you wanted to be more specific, you could say we have Jews living here on Rechov Chaim Vital, for example, uh, which is certainly one place. And on that street you have Sfaradim and Temanim and Ashkenazim and Hasidim and Litaim, and everyone's doing something different on certain issues. Uh, you may therefore ask, well, what happened to the end of Lothi to And that's a very good question, but that's a separate issue which we'll have to leave for another time. The fact is that the Gemara says in the Sefer Yevamot, that when you have two different towns, and the Jews in this town have this Minhag, or this Psak, and in this town the Jews have another Psak, or another Minhag, that's okay, but not in the same town. In other words, you want there to be a basic unity within the Jewish community, at least in one place. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So, uh, r- r- the Natsiv says, wait a second, you're talking about two different places, Bavel and Eretz Israel, not even two cities, they're two countries. So, what's the problem? Why, why should they not be able to do two different things? Just like we have, like, like we said before, two Starim here, one Seder here. Two Yamim Tovim there, one Yom Tov here. So, what, why, why all of a sudden it now is it different? That's a very powerful question. Furthermore, says the Natsiv, the Natsiv tries to metaret uh, this kushia that he asked himself by saying that it's possible that where you have two different minhagim, which was not, not established by the Chachamim, it just works out that way. The Jews here do one thing, the Jews here do something else, but it wasn't decided by the Chachamim explicitly or formally that it should be so, then we, we don't mind. But when there's a formal decision by the Chachamim which states the Jews here do one thing, the Jews here do another thing, and then it's more of a problem. Well, may, maybe that's so, uh, and maybe it's not. It's not, it's not clear that, that this is, is uh, this terus is sufficient. But even, but even if it was sufficient, the Tzib has an even more powerful kusha. He says, nevertheless, it's still it's very kasha. He says this business in my eyes. He says, in came as man beth hamidash nami alve kamei chilof yisrael bechutz laatz v'lot dachu shabbat uveretz yisrael dachu. In other words, it's clear that this statement in the Gemara is being said in a certain period of time, certainly well after the time of the Mikdash. There's no question about that. Centuries after the Mikdash. What happened earlier, hundreds of years before, let's, go, let's turn the clock back 400 years, shall we say. What was going on? In Eretz Yisrael, they were doing one thing. In Chutzlar, there many Jews at the time of the Mikdash also living in different parts of the, of the world or countries around there, near Eretz Yisrael or some closer, some further distant. There were many Jews living in Bavel, there were many Jews living in Turkey, there were many Jews living in Italy, in Greece, and other places, in Mitzrayim. 
So there were definitely communities of Jews in Chutz Laaretz where they were not doing Nekidat uh, Rav and Shabbat, and they didn't know. And, and at the time of the Mikdash they were. So how come that was okay then? In other words, at what point did it not become Beseder? How, why did it not become Beseder all of a sudden now, at this point in time when the Talmud says so? What happened 200 years before? Then it was Beseder. This is, this is, this is a very powerful Kushiah. So the, now the, uh, the uh, Nitzim says, de la mishum ze. In other words, the reason is not this reason given by Rashi. He's disagreeing with Rashi openly. He says, Ela lahar hurban ben hamikdash, dahawiyan ikar yishuv Yisrael bechutz laaretz, migralan yoshevei eretz Yisrael ha min hakvar Yisrael. Wala dachyan Shabbat. Ma she'en ken, ifne hurban ben hamikdash, haya ikar Yisrael beretz Yisrael. It's so brilliant what the two says, two and a half lines. He says, as follows, he says, the difference is that something did happen in the, in the interim. In other words, I asked a question, says the Nitzim. I asked, why was it okay 300 years before that the Jews in Eretz Yisrael would do Nitzat Allah on Shabbat and the Jews in Bavel or in Turkey would not? And now all of a sudden the Talmud tells me at a certain point in time, let's just for argument's sake say, and, and, and Michal here already sort of gave the, gave the secret away, that it's a, this is a, this, the second sugya which goes back and, and disagrees with the first sugya is, is clear to me, although it's something that is difficult to prove, maybe uh, empirically, but it's, it's clear to me that it's a later sugya, it's an additional sugya that was added later, probably in the time of the uh, Sforaim, I imagine. Uh, at some point in time, at any rate, this terutz was stated by the Talmud. So what happened to make this... It, it, why does it now become the right thing? Is this the right argument to use, to say, no, now we are going to be doing the same thing. Before, it wasn't a valid argument to say that. And the Tzidu says as follows. It's not so that everyone was doing the same thing. If that's not the, if that's not the case. But it's, it's more than that. When... There was a Beth Mikdash. I'm, I'm quoting the Tzivah as he says it. When there was a Beth Mikdash, the focus, the center of the Jewish world was Eretz Yisrael. And the Jewish community in Eretz Yisrael was the focus of, of the Jewish world. And therefore they had, they, they had a special status as the, as the center and the focal point of the Jewish world and as the, as it were, the older brother of, in the family. And they could do things independently of the other Jews around the world. And in fact, on many things, the Jews around the world perhaps follow them, except when, in those cases when they could not, such as when they had a suffect, like they did, as, as in this case, when they didn't know if today is Rosh Chodesh or, or tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh, or if today is Yom Tov or tomorrow is Yom Tov. But on other things, they would often follow the Jews in the Eretz The Jews in the Eretz would be setting the tone. However, after the Chulban, says the Nitziv, I quote from the, uh, the, the Nitziv directly, he says, Masha'en ken ifne, uh, לאחר חורבן בית המקדש דהויאן עיקר יישוב ישראל בחוץ לארץ מגררן יושבי ארץ ישראל אחר מן הכפר ישראל Now, after the חורבן the majority of כפר ישראל is in חוץ לארץ For argument's sake, let's just say in the time of the Talmud in Bavel the time of the Sforim in Bavel, Vadai In the time, in this period of time the, the focal point of the Jewish world is Bavel now and no longer is Israel and it's important that Bavel maintain this status as the center and the focal point in the Jewish world which sets the tone that everyone else follows. So now it's correct and logical or reasonable to say that all the Jews in the world, even those in Eretz Yisrael, who are no longer the Ikar of Am Yisrael, now they're the Tafil of Eretz Yisrael, of, of Am Yisrael because they're a minority and, and, the, and they're more Yeshivot in Bavel now and they're more Chachamim in Bavel now and they're more Jews in Bavel now, which at some point became true. Uh, which we'll discuss in a moment exactly when that became true. Now it's correct to say that all the Jews have to follow the Jews of Bavel, the Chachamim of Bavel, and they set the tone now. So if the Jews in Bavel, the Chachamim of Bavel, are not not Terulav on Shabbat, no one should be not Terulav on Shabbat. That's not the same as saying that we, we always want everyone between the, doing the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's actually something much more profound what the Nativ is saying. So that's what the Nativ says. The Nativ is openly, plainly disagreeing with Rashi and the Rambam. And it's, it's a brilliant, uh, a brilliant uh, chidush, a brilliant explanation the Nativ gives us. However, I would nevertheless suggest that we examine what the Nativ says. Historically, 
first of all, we don't have precise statistics. We don't know, I certainly don't know, and I don't think anyone really knows exactly how many Jews, for example, lived in Eretz Yisrael, let's just for argument's sake, say, 30 years after the Chuban of the Second Dash, which is uh, year 100 according to the Christian calendar. How many Jews lived in Eretz Yisrael, or how many Jews lived in Babel, for argument's sake? Does anyone know exactly? I don't know. I don't know. I also don't know, for that matter, how many uh, Jews, uh, let's say, 30 years before the Chulban of the Beth Midrash, the year 40, according to the Christian calendar. How many Jews lived in Bavel at that point, and how many Jews lived in Eretz Yisrael? I'm not sure. Maybe there were already more Jews in, in Bavel uh, already in the year 40. I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe there were not. I'm not entirely certain either. Either way, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't be certain of it. Maybe, maybe there are some uh, there is certain, some information on this that I'm not aware of but I, I somehow doubt that we have precise figures that we can be certain what is clear even if we put aside the issue of, of numbers and you know, statistics uh, taking a census which we can't do obviously it's clear that historically the reality of this change in the Jewish world that Nancyv is describing, which is a factual event, it's something which, which took place at some point. It's clear that it didn't happen immediately at the time of the Khuban. The, 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 the Nativ uses the Khuban as the, as the pivotal point. Uh, before the Khuban, after the Khuban, I can see so. It was, it was, before, before it was like this, and now it, went, now it, it tipped the other way. But that, that focal point, in fact, was not at the time of the Khuban. It was later, because uh, we, well, we see this from many, from many uh, sources in, 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 in Divrei Chazal, in the, in the Talmud, we see that it took quite some time for the, uh, for, uh, until the, the supremacy of Bavel was established over Eretz It took at least uh, something like uh, 250 or 300 years at the very least, if not more than that, perhaps 400 years. Um, maybe not 400, more like 300, actually. Um, this was a result of the fact that over the over the centuries, from the time of the Chuban until, shall we say, for argument's sake, let's say the year 300 in Eretz Yisrael, uh, or a bit later, the Jews in Eretz Yisrael were being persecuted and uh, and pressured by the Romans and later by the Byzantines with much the same thing the Byzantines the continu- direct continuation of the Romans uh, were being persecuted and, and um, harassed so much and the Yeshivoth were being closed down because they were Christians now and they became religious fanatics and they wanted to, to eradicate Judaism so they shut down Yeshivoth and they didn't allow the Sanhedrin to function and, uh, and Jews and, and they were taxing the Jews to death and what have you so more and more Jews were simply leaving Eretz Yisrael and moving to other countries whether it was Bavel or Turkey or Mitzrayim or, or further afield wherever it was so over a period of centuries and the Jewish population of Eretz Yisrael dwindled. The, the, the importance of the, uh, the Torah sense in Eretz Yisrael became less. And at the same time, in Bavel, things were going very nicely. The Jews were, leave, were left alone and were actually autonomous to a very large degree and able to run their own affairs. They had their own system of justice, their own police force, they had their own everything, basically. And the yeshivot were, were, were flourishing, and there were, there were many, many chachamim and tamidim, and, 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 and things were going well. So over a period of time, the center, the central Torah, the Torah center of the Jewish world became Bavel rather than Eretz So this is, this is true. When did this happen? Well, it's difficult to pinpoint the year, but we do know the following. We have a Gemara, which appears in two places in the, uh, in the Talmud Bavli. A statement by Abaye, which appears in Psachim Daf Nun Aleph, and in Cholin Daf Yod Hev, where Abaye says to Rava, Abaye was in Bavel, he says to Rava, Anan Kaifenan Laho, we here in Bavel are Kfufim, Anachno Kfufim Lahem, we are subservient to them, we have to follow their lead, because there was still a Beit Din in Eretz Israel, still a Sahin Din operating at that time. We're talking about 250 years approximately uh, after the Khuban. And 
they were still a bit in, in Eretz Yisrael, which was doing Kiddush HaChodesh. So all the Jews on earth had to follow the lead of, 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 the, of, the, of the Torah center still in, in Eretz Yisrael, because they were the ones who told you when Bechal, when it's Rosh Chodesh, which means they're the ones who tell you when it's Rosh Hashanah, and when it's Pesach, and when it's Shavuot. It all depends on what they say. So as long as that was the situation, as long as there was Kiddush HaChodesh in Eretz Yisrael, uh, no one could claim uh, to be uh, the, the new center of power in the Jewish world. But when that ceased to be the case, the usual date given, uh, as I recall, is uh, the equivalent of 359, according to the Christian calendar, is, is uh, when the uh, fixed calendar came into use, more or less, which corresponded to when the Byzantines uh, basically shut the Sanhedrin down and, 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 and there was no longer any Kiddush HaChodesh. From that time onwards, things changed. The balance of power clearly changed because now uh, the Chachamim and the Jews in Bavel were not really reliant upon the Jews in, in, in Eretz Yisrael for, for very much. What's the source of the Pesachim uh, Cholim? Pesachim Nun Aleph Hamud Aleph and Cholim Nun Aleph Hamud Non Aleph Hamud Aleph and Cholim Yil Chet Hamud Beth. So. And Baya says twice, Anan Kafen and Laho. We have to follow them. Which shows that at the time of Abaye, this uh, the ascendancy of Babel was not yet a fact. This happened some time later. So we're talking approximately the middle, mid fourth century according to the Christian calendar. That's when that seems to be the pivotal point when things really began to tip completely in the other direction. And then for a period of, of centuries, for the, for the next six centuries or so uh, there was no doubt that the, the center of the, of the Jewish world, the center of the Torah world, certainly was, was in Bavel. And that, by the way, parenthetically, that's the real reason, and the only reason, that Talmud Bavli became the, the handbook of Halakha, not for any other reason, because that was the, that was the new center of, of, of Torah learning in the, of, in, in the world, and that's where all Jews turned with their questions, etc. There was nowhere else to turn to, really. And, uh, and of course, the Bionim and the Chachamim in Bavli quoted the Talmud Bavli. They quoted their, their book of Halakha that they knew, that they, they studied, etc., that they had received. And that's, that's how the Talmud Bavli became the, the standard. Not for any other uh, intellectual or halachic reason, but because of this historic reality. So, when, when understood in, in this light, what the Nasiv is telling us is, I think, is, 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 is very, very insightful and very true, but we have to understand that. And maybe that's what the Manatee also meant. Maybe he just was using the terminology before the Chuban, after the Chuban, in a, in a loose sense. That, that it didn't actually happen to the Chuban. It happened sometime later. But it did definitely happen at some point that Bavel began to be the, the center of the Jewish world and the center of the Torah world. And at such a time, it made sense, at least in the eyes of Chachmei Bavel to say now everyone has to follow our lead and we, we, we uh, are the center of the Jewish world all, all Jews have to follow the lead of Chachmei Bavel and, and Bnei Bavel now we can take all of this having understood all this and think about the present time it says in the Yoshalmi in Sechet Eruvin Peregim HaLachat Teth at the end of Peregim actually it says, Rabbi Avhu Azal Alexandria. Rabbi Avhu from Eretz Israel, once one year went to Alexandria in Egypt, where there was a very, very large Jewish community, going back to the time of Choban Bait Rishon. In other words, going back hundreds of years. What Lavin And he told them to take, to do Nukhtatu Lav on Shabbat. He was in Alexandria. He was spending Sukkot there for whatever reason. Rabbi Avhu from Eretz Yisrael, he came to Alexandria and he told the Jews there, I guess he was the biggest hacham around in Alexandria at the time, and he said to everyone, do the Tilaf and Lavon Shabbat. Which they didn't do every year. Why were they not doing it every year? Because they didn't know for a fact whether it was Yom Tov or not. They also had the same problem of not knowing whether it was, uh, which day was Rosh Chodesh and therefore which day was really Yom Tov. Just as in Bavel they had this problem. But he, Rabbi Avu, came from Eretz Yisrael during the interim. He knew which day had been made Yom Tov, Yom Rosh Chodesh. And then he came, then he traveled to Alexandria, which wasn't such a long uh, journey. It was only a journey of uh, up to at the most a week. And, uh, 
and therefore he knew for a fact. He said, I know that today is which day was Rosh Chodesh, and I'm telling you that today is de- definitely the first day of Sukkot, and even though it's Shabbat, you should do Lulav, and that's what they did. When he, when he heard about this, Rabbi Yudan Asi heard about this in Eretz Yisrael, Shama Rabbi, Menar, man meyabelo Rabbi Avu Bechol Shatha. It says something different here, there's a mistake in the Gisa here. But it says, instead of man meyabel, it says man meyechol lahom, which doesn't make no sense at all, which is why many of the Fashim didn't uh, quite understand what it was saying. But it's not, not no one's fault, it just is, the Gisa is, is slightly wrong. But if you have a couple of letters, you take in a couple of letters, you know what it means. And I've uh, showed you them and explains the Gisa. Um, in Yerushalmi keeps Shuto on this on this Yerushalmi. So he, Rabbi Rabbi Danasi said, uh, "That's all very well." But this year, Rabbi Afu was in, uh, happened to be in Alexandria, and he knew which day was Rosh Chodesh, and therefore he knew that which day was Yom Tov. And he told them, "Today's Yom Tov, what day? Take the lulav." But who's going to bring the Rabbi Afu every year? In other words, he's no, there's not, they're not always going to have every year someone from Eretz Yisrael who's going to tell them for sure that today that today is Vada Yom Tov. In other words, Rabbi is saying it's not good to have this, this uh, such a system that one year in Alexandria they do lulav on Shabbat, next year they don't, or one year, or one year they think they might, next year they're not quite sure what to do. That will lead to confusion. We have to have uh, one rule: la peluk We have to have a, a system which which they can use every year. whether someone happens to come from Eretz and tell them the the, the the fact that today is definitely Yom Tov, or whether no one shows up and tells them. So therefore, Rabbi was not happy with Rabbi of who what he did because not because taking the love on Shabbat is the wrong thing to do, but because they they in Alexandria as opposed to Jews in, 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 in the Galil where Rabbi lived, where there was Pashut that you do Lulav on Shabbat. These Jews in Alexandria will not always know for a fact if, if, if Shabbat is Vadai, is Vadai the first day of Sukkot or not. And therefore we can't have this confusion. Yes, no, yes, no, we're not sure, we're a bit confused. And that will lead to trouble. So Rabbi didn't think it was a good idea. That's why Rabbi Yosei, it says in the Yerushalmi now, sent them a letter to the Jews in Alexandria. Mishlach Ketiv Lahon, Af Al Pishe Kalvu Lachem Sidre Moadot, Al Tishnu Minhaga Watechen Lachem Efesh. Even though you were sent uh, information uh, about the calendar so that you, were, you would know more or less when, uh, when, when the Chag is going to be for sure, nevertheless keep, keep doing two days misafek and, 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 and don't do the love on Shabbat because you, you, know, you, you don't always know so from this we see that it's Pashut when, or in those places where, it, where it's known for a fact which day is definitely Yom Tov you would I do Yom, uh, Lulav on Shabbat it was only in somewhere like Alexandria where it was a, there was a problem and not always did they know that, that Rabbi was not happy with Rabbi Avu and there Rabbi Avu said if, I, if I'm here and I know I'm going to tell them and they should do it why, why not do the Miswa where, where, where it can be done so we see from Yerushalayim that it's Vadai uh, Pashut Legamre that you do Lulav on Shabbat there's no, there's no Shaila there's no question yes so now that we don't do uh, Katan with the witness something like this sorry now now we we have a calendar that is fixed so what happens there it's different than all right, you're asking, you're asking the following question. Now, now we have a fixed calendar. The present time we have a fixed calendar. Every all Jews on earth know for a fact which day is the first day of Sukkot. There's no doubt, correct? So, Lichola, everyone should be clean on, on, on the first day when it falls on Shabbat. So the answer to your question is you're right, but you're also wrong because the, the rule that was established... Uh, for the Jews in Chutzlaritz at least, was that even once, even when there was a fixed calendar, once the fixed calendar came into use, they would continue acting in Chutzlaritz as if there was no fixed calendar. Right. So, and, and this was made as a kind of takana, so they should continue as, as, uh, as if there was no fixed calendar. So, if the Jews in Chutzlaritz were not doing the love on Shabbat, before uh, before the fixed calendar because they had to suffer. even now when they know suffer, they still would not do so the same idea of, of keeping of two days Yom Tov previously they kept originally they kept two days Yom Tov and Chutz because of the Safek 
Now, t- nowadays, or since the f- fixed calendar, the, the second day, and it's not big mishum safek, it's mishum takana. There was a takana that they should do so, they should continue to do so, which basically means continue doing what you do, you're doing before and don't change. All right, that's that's all very well. And it's a separate discussion which we would have to discuss another time whether whether this takana is still uh, as uh, Necessary or as reasonable as it may, may have been once upon a time. Maybe, maybe Sanhedrin today would would change such a takana. But that's a different discussion. So, in the, mean, for the meantime, there is a takana and it hasn't been changed. So, it's it's, it's mechayev. It's, it obligates the Jews of Chutzlaretz. <laughs> but regarding uh, this question of love in Eretz Yisrael, there was never a takana. Uh, certainly not in the Mishnah, and certainly not in the Talmud Yerushalmi, and even not in the Talmud Bavli originally. Uh, there was no attack on other Jews in Eretz Yisrael should not do the love on Shabbat on the first day. The reason given eventually in the second sugya or the second statement in the Talmud Bavli, which undoes that which was said in the first statement, the, the reason given by the Talmud Bavli why the Jews in Eretz Yisrael should not do uh, lulav on Shabbat was that now, or as the Nativ explained it to us, now that we in Bavel are the focal point of the, Jew, of the Jewish world and the Torah world, all Jews should follow the lead of Bavel, and, uh, and therefore, should, therefore even the Jews in Eretz Yisrael have no effect whatsoever, should not do lulav on Shabbat. Now, we have to ask ourselves the following question. If this was true in the year, for argument's sake, 600 according to the Christian calendar, that uh, the Jewish community and the, and the yeshivoth, etc., and in Bavel were the focal point of the Jewish world. That's true. And, that's, and it's around that time that I assume that this statement was made in the time of Bavli. I mean, if one, someone wants to say that I'm wrong, I would have said 100 years before, 500, 500 in the year 500 or something. It doesn't make a big difference. Even if you want to say it was said in the year 400, it still doesn't make a big difference. At some point it was said because it, was, it reflected a certain historical reality. It doesn't matter exactly what, what year it was. Well, what about the present time? Uh, should we, the Jews, shall we say, of Yerushalayim, for example, or the Jews of Haifa, or the Jews of Beth Sha'an today, should we be following the lead of the, the great Torah center of Babel today? No. Is there a Torah center in Babel today? No. Not as far as I know. In fact, I'm not even sure if there's a minyan of Jews in, in Baghdad today. Torah community, there is certainly no great yeshiva, there are no geonim, there are no great chachamim in Bavel, anywhere in Bavel today. In fact, there are basically no Jews at all in Bavel today. It's obvious that um, the focal point of the Jewish world, the center of the Torah world, has not been in Bavel for uh, at least <coughs> at least 900 years. Therefore, this argument, as explained to us by the Nitziv, with the explanation that I, that I added to what the Nitziv had to say, that I'm basing myself on the Nitziv says, which to me strikes me as, as much more, much more the, the real uh, explanation, the true explanation of what the Talmud Bavli says, rather than what Rashi and the Rambam in this case say. According to that rationale of the Talmud Bavli, why the Jews of Eretz Yisrael should be following the lead of the Jews in Bavel, uh, it seems to me very difficult today to make a case that we should be doing, we should still be following the lead of the Jews in Bavel, without, when in fact there are no Jews there at all. Where in fact the, quite the opposite is the case. Today, it is once again the, the fact that over 50% of the Jews on earth live in Eretz Yisrael. There's a certain Mahlokah between some of the demographers, whether it's 49.8 percent of the present time, or whether it's 52.7 percent of the present time, whether it's 50-50 exactly, uh, and I'm not going to uh, get involved in that in that discussion. Uh, everyone agrees that uh, basically the the, the, the the situation has been reached where at least 50 percent of the Jews in the world live in in, in Eretz Yisrael at present. I'm willing to add that my, from what I read, what I've seen on the subject and this discussion amongst the demographers, I think it's plain that it's actually clearly over 50%, but even if it's only 50%, it doesn't really matter. We have a, a, a majority or a plurality of Jews in Eretz Israel. We have, there's no question that the Torah center of the world today is in Eretz Israel. 
if you don't, if you're not convinced of that, then you have to do what I did last night: drive to Beth Israel, which is in next to Mount Sharim, where everyone goes to buy wood and and what have you for Sukkot. That's the big the big season for the Nagarim over there, right next to the Mir Yeshiva. And you see these huge crowds of Yeshiva boys uh, speaking English. Most of them with a, with a North American accent, some of them with a, a British accent, or some of them speaking French, and what have you. And they all came to learn in Mir. Well, why didn't the Jews in Flan go to learn in France or in, or in New York? The answer is because the Torah center of the world is, is in Yerushalayim and not in New York. That's the fact. Um, this is a reality which came into existence over the last 150 years gradually, and it, it, it and, this, and the fact was sealed after the Shah. It became it became a fact that the, the new central of the, of, the, of the Jewish world and the and the, and the Torah world was by Israel. And there's no question that is the reality today. We all know how how many young Jews come from Chutzlar to Israel, spend a year or two or what have you. And uh, if, even if they go back, they they come here because they come into the center. And then they go out to the periphery again. But not the, where the Jews, Jewish young people from from Israel, don't go to Chutzlar for a year or two to study Torah, or to uh, or to or to you know, or to pick up some uh, you know some Jewish um, uh, you know f- a feeling of what it means to be Jewish. Right? That's not how it works. In other words, the reality has completely uh, been reversed. The reality is the exact opposite uh, of that which pertained at that time when this statement was made in the, in the Tabud Bavli, which is the basis of this psak that the lulav should not be done on Shabbat, which, is, which goes against the Mishnah, which goes against several Mishnah. Um, for the Rambamistim, I could also, I could also add a, a further um, uh, point, and that is that according to certain people I've heard uh, express their, their views on such things over the years, I understand this, that they believe um, that uh, the halacha that is kovea is that which was stated by the last Sanhedrin. Well, the, the Rabbi Danasi and his Mishnah certainly reflect the opinion of at least his best in his Sanhedrin at the time. There was no Sanhedrin that we know of that disagree with his with his with his Mishnah with his his Sanhedrin. The Talmud Yerushalmi agrees. Even the Talmud Bavli agreed at the beginning. This statement, which which is said in the Talmud Bavli, eventually, which which undoes or goes against what the Mishnah states, was not said by Smuchim. It was not said by any Sanhedrin. It was said at the very uh, no matter what how you slice it, it was said by at the time of the of the Amoraim, or probably more likely, in fact I would say almost certainly at the time of the Sforaim in Bavel, but certainly not by Sanhedrin. So how does this happen the statement undo the previous Chakalaha of the last Sanhedrin? Um, it's an interesting question, but I'll leave that to certain individuals who, who live by this uh, invented theory, which is a, an entirely an, an invention of their own, uh, which, doesn't, which has no bearing on reality. But those who believe in such a, a, a notion, such a theorem, can answer that question for themselves. The fact is, this psak of the Talmud roughly is causing people today, certainly as you said, I'm talking about as right now, um, not to be the Kevah Mishwami Torah of Lula Avon Shabbat, based on, on a rationale which is clearly irrelevant in the, in the present situation. In fact, not only irrelevant, in fact, the opposite of what we should be aiming for. In fact, we should dafka today, for, for the very same reason given by the Tamil Bavli today, dafka, we should do the lulav on, on Shabbat in Israel to confirm and affirm and emphasize the fact that today the, the, the center of the Torah world, the Jewish world, is dafka in Israel. And, everyone, and, and if anything, there might be room to discuss whether the Jews in Chutzas might not, should not perhaps follow the lead of the Jews in, in, in Eretz Israel. If it were not for the fact that we have a Takana of keeping uh, two days Yom Tov, and maybe that's a reason not to do it, which is also a, a separate discussion, because it's no longer because of Safek, it's because of Takana. So really, you could, you could still have two days of Yom Tov in Chutzas, Mipnei Takana, Mipnei Takana, to have two days. But on the first day on Shabbat, which is Vadai Shabbat, which is Vadai Yom Tov today, which but I am tov rishon, you could do lulav, and you still have a second day on tov. Uh, you could do such a thing, but uh, for now, let's say I'm talking only about Eretz Yisrael. There's no valid reason whatsoever that I can think of today that that we should be acting uh, in opposition to that which is clearly stated 
in the Torah, in the Mishnah, in the Talmud Yerushalmi, and even the Talmud Bavli, until the last moment it changes its mind, for reasons that no longer apply. I can't imagine, uh, for the life of me, why we should not mimikayim the Mishnah of Lulav, uh, which is a Mishnah in the Torah, on Yom Yom Tov Arish, on Shahar B'Shabbat. And that's why I also wrote, uh, this year I wrote an article on the subject, uh, entitled Nefila Shulav B'Shabbat Rashuv Derech HaMelech, being published in different places, maybe it might be in, on, in, on Ynet, apparently. It's possible, maybe in Arucheva, on, on the website in Arucheva, it might be before Sukkot. I want to comment on what Ruben said, that, that maybe, maybe if, even though Pavel lost his status as the center, but until Eretz gained the status, so so there was an in-between period when maybe it was transferred over to some of the places like America or Ashkenaz or someplace. Perhaps it was, but they're, 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 we're not there for history now. But so let's say before before Eretz became the center, so we would have still followed, even though not Babel, we would have followed other places that kept the, the Minhag going. Well, I understand what you're saying, but there's no, but it's, it's it's divorced from reality. What you're saying? Why? Why is it divorced? Not only from the present reality, it's divorced from reality, historical reality, because once the center of Torah in Babel began to fall apart, about 900 years ago or a thousand years ago more like a thousand years ago there was never again anywhere um, almost well, almost uh, just uh, you could just about say there was never again uh, one place or one community or one country that, that was the, clearly the center of the Jewish world there was never such reality again there was originally there was a that moved to Berkeley but after that things just began to diffuse all over the world Jews were spread all over the globe just about no there was never such a, a clear a clear uh, situation where there were one, one place was clearly the center. In fact, the one exception to that, what I just said now, might be Dafka Ashkenaz and Sofat in the, uh, shall we say, in the 12th, uh, the 13th, uh, maybe the 14th, up to the, middle, up to the middle of the 14th century when there, were, there was a gilsh of the Jews from Spain, or from France, which would basically put an end to the, the Kazatra and Sofat. For the, during that time, the, the center of, of learning in the world was definitely in Ashkenaz and Sofat. The, f- the simple proof of that is that both Ben Yonah and Amban, who were from Sfarad, when they wanted to learn Torah as young men, they wanted to go to where the action was, so to speak. When they wanted to go to the Mir of the day, they went to, they went to Ashkenaz <laughs> to learn. Because there was no one on that level to learn from in Spain. Ashkenaz meaning Germany? Yes, that's right. That's where they went. Because all the major, the, the biggest Chachamim in the world, and, lo, and many, and many, many Chachamim, and many, many Talmudim were in Sofat and Ashkenaz. And, and so, if anything, you could say at that time, from the period just before Rashi, from the time of Rabbeinu Gershom, until the time of, uh, until the time of the, of the Smug or something like that, uh, for about 300, you know, more, it's, it's, it's like 400 years. Uh, you could make you could make a case that that was the center of the Torah learning, but even then, it was the, it was the center of Torah learning. It was it was greater than any other center of Torah learning, but it didn't really have the status of of, of you know the supreme uh, the, the, the the center of the Jewish world. It's true that there, there you had the most the greatest chachamim, the many the, the most chachamim in terms of numbers. There you had uh, the greatest number of students of Torah, etc. That's true. All the ballet of Safot and Rashi and before Rashi and Gershom and, and others, but it was never exactly as it was before previously. So even that's not clear whether you could uh, make such a case. But certainly after that ceased to be the case. In other words, from the mid 14th century onwards, no, that, well, that, well, even that was no longer true. And then, then you had, and then Dafka from that period on. Again, if you wanted to look, if you were, if you were to search for a new center of Torah learning. So about the 1500s, it was in it was in Poland and Lithuania and uh, and Lithuania, but no, not so much. It was in Ukraine and Poland. So Lithuania was like maybe a bit later. So there would be nothing yet. yet to, uh, but again, it wasn't it wasn't the over over overriding and 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 clear center of of of, of Jewish existence in the world. It wasn't like that. There were Jews everywhere. But there was not anything yet to, to change the midrash or to reinstate doing it on Shabbat again, like Eretz Israel. Okay, so again, so now you're you're saying that there was no reason to change, perhaps 500 years ago, maybe. And again, this is according to this 
latter Svara from the period of the Svaraim, I think, in the Talmud Bavli, as opposed to what the Mishnah states, as opposed to what the Talmud Yerushalmi states. But even if you're going according to this latter Tirut, which is a very surprising uh, turnaround, uh, you know, it's like a U-turn to Russia. It's like the, the guy is driving along, all of a sudden makes a U-turn and turns around, says the officer. It's a very unusual thing. It's very, it doesn't really happen anywhere else, as far as I can recall. Such a thing. So, uh, even, even, even using that spot, though, and, and you're saying there were maybe no other times or places where you could, uh, you could suggest that now it's possible to do otherwise. Well, maybe that's, that was true. Maybe that was, that was correct 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 300 years ago, but it's certainly not, not true today. It's not true today, no, it's show there's no issue of second day on Tov. There's no takana of, of a second day on Tov or any, any such thing. There was never any takana bets and not to mean you know, love. Uh, the Mishnah says explicitly that we should uh, so there's, there's really no valid reason so it seems except the, 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 the well known reason which is really the reason for just about everything that goes on today and that is that that's how it used to be and we can't change anything that's, that's the essential reason for almost everything that goes on whatever, whatever it is in other words a kind of uh, a kind of paralysis in, 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 in halachic thinking and, and, and halachic practice and Jewish and, and Jewish life that we can we can only do at best that we can maintain that which was done in the past we certainly cannot uh, rethink anything or make certain adjustments we just can't do such a thing that's the, that's the essential uh, reason that that uh, Results in, in the kind of situation we have today, where we, where we don't do the love in Eretz on Shabbat because of the Torah center in Babel, which hasn't been around for a thousand years. That's 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 the bottom line. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers: if you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.